In this video, I'll teach you how to sew an open crochet piece to a closed one. In our case, it will be the muzzle and the ears of this cute amigurumi pig. There will be a couple of interesting techniques for you to learn when it comes to sewing because, for example, the ears, they are sewed making a C shape uh, for the outer and the inner part of the ears. And the muzzle also has a different shape because it's flat on the top and the bottom of the muzzle and it has some curves in the corners as well. So, let's get it started! In this video, I will start teaching you different techniques to sew all the parts of the amigurumi. But before we start learning how to sew, um, I have to talk about different pins. And this is very important, people usually take it for granted. But having different pins and pin sizes can be really extremely helpful when it comes to sewing. So I have a few examples here. You don't need to have all these amount of pins. I have these ones. They, they are very, very small. I like them especially for hair dolls, for, but in our pig, I won't use this. I just want to show you the different types. This one I bought recently in AliExpress and I liked it because they are pretty big. You can see that compared to this one, look at the size, it's very big and it's very sharp too. So when you um, stick something in your amigurumi, it does not create holes because it's very thin, it's very sharp. This is a good one. And I have other different pins here. This one is also very good, it's, it's a small. I think this was, it's even a bit bended <laughs> because this is very old. This was my first box of pin. My mom gave it to me when I started crocheting amigurumis. These were my first pins. And um, they are very cheap. And I strongly recommend you have a couple because we will need it, okay? So let's get it started. Let me... Oh, and this one. This is the biggest one I have. I bought this in Brazil. You can see that this one is big, but when we compare the size... Look, it's amazing. This pin is very big. I like it for bigger parts of amigurumi. We will use it later. Um, but the problem is that the, the metal part is a bit thicker. So whenever I stick this pin in my amigurumi, it creates holes, which is something that I don't like. It, opened, it opens the gaps between stitches. You can see the, the thickness of these two. So this is the biggest problem with this one, but it's good. It's good to have a big pin like that. So now we will start with the muzzle. This will be the first technique that I will show you. I'll teach you in this sewing lesson. But before sewing, anything to the amigurumi like here i have the muzzle um, you will do the same procedure with all the other parts the ears the body since we are working in continuous rounds there will always be this difference here between the first let me focus between the first stitch and the last stitch that you did so we have to minimize this difference what i like to do is you skip this stitch here Insert the tapestry needle in the following stitch and you pull the thread. Okay? Let me focus. You pull the thread. You see that we have the yarn here? Now you will enter with the tapestry needle in the back loops of this stitch here. And you see that we create, we call it like a false stitch, because this is not a stitch, but it looks like, it looks like the other single crochets that we did. And now we don't have the difference between the first and the last single crochet that you did. Okay, so this is the first thing that we do. You see, it's perfect now. This is the first thing that we have to do before sewing, okay? And before sewing, again, what do we have to do pin? 
okay bin everything and since it's a small part I will use my smallest pins because if I use a big pin like that it will probably bother me when I start crocheting but if I try to pin um, a bigger part like the body with a small pin like that it will probably not work that well so we will pin the muzzle so it doesn't escape this is the position that we want we will count the rounds don't worry okay so let's count it together this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13 14 15 16 so you'll pin the muzzle between rounds 13 and 16 we have like one two one two single crochets apart from the eyes pin it okay this um, remaining thread from the magic ring you can put it inside the muzzle you can also cut it if you prefer It's completely up to you so now that it's well placed it's in the right position keep the pins and we will start sewing this technique technique number one what we have to do is you insert the, the yarn is here you see what is the closest gap next to where the yarn is it's not this one it's this one the yarn is here so the best gap is this one so and I want to come here you always have to find the closest gap to where the stitch is keep the pins okay so the yarn is here you pass it like this in the stitch and pull the thread oops i'm sorry i was not focusing correctly okay so you insert the tapestry needle in the following stitch pull it and which gap do you have to enter now you will pass the tapestry needle in the same gap where the yarn is here and in this case we go to the closest gap next to the following stitch okay the yarn is here you enter like this in the stitch and pull the thread I'm doing it very patiently because I want you to follow this explanation you see that now I got close to the to my pin this part is already fixed so I don't need that pin we can put it here so this part that is not sewed it won't escape you enter with the tapestry needle here in the following stitch and again you will pass the yarn in the same in the same gap here where the other thread is and go to the next one I know this is not uh, stuffed it's uh, still empty but this is not the moment to start stuffing I will do that with you don't worry this is the process that we have to do you see that it's very well sewed it's secured so this is basically the process that you have to do this first technique to sew the muzzle okay always observe what is the closest gap next to where the stitches 
you see that I want the muzzle here. Should I insert the tapestry needle here? Of course not, it's too far. Here, mm -mm, it's too far. There is a gap here. So this is the closest gap to my stitch. This is the place that I have to go. This is what you have to observe when you are sewing. And always have pins. Why did I say that pins are so important? Because if you don't use pins, the piece will escape, it will change positions. Now it won't happen because this part here, this upper part of the muzzle is already sewed. But if you were not using pins, you'd probably um, twist it like this or like this and you will have it sewed uh, incorrectly. And sewing is not one of the, my favorite parts and I know lots of crocheters who don't like doing it. So to make sure that I'm doing it correctly, I like to pin everything so I don't have to remove all the sewing that I did and do it all, all again. It's too boring to do it again. At least for me, this is something boring. So now I got very close to the next pin. I can remove it, it's not necessary anymore. I will keep um, sewing the muzzle now that you learned the technique and I will come back when I finish it. Actually no, I won't come back when I finish. Um, I will sew it a little bit more here. Let me remove the pin so I can show it to you. We started sewing here. And I will sew until I got to this, po this point um, because I have to teach you how to stuff correctly when we are sewing. So I got here to this part. You see that this is still open and almost all the muzzle is sewed. So um, now we will stuff it. And I don't like to stuff the amigurumi when it's still like very, very open. Um, let's suppose I just sewed this part. If we stuff, if, if we had stuffed, um, the stuffing would start to come out of it and it would bother us. Whenever we pass the tapestry needle, the, we would grab stuffing with it and it, it's awful. Um, so that's why, in this case, I like to stuff with the tweezers. I showed you with the arms, how do I stuff the amigurumi when we have small parts, I simply wrap the polyester fiber in my tweezers like this and you put like this in the amigurumi and with the help of your fingers you release the polyester from the tweezers and you put it inside like this. You don't have to stuff that much, it's just enough stuffing to create the volume we already have a volume here, but we want to keep it. And now that you stuffed a little bit, you can continue sewing the muzzle. I will finish this, this sewing with you because I want to teach you oops, how to fasten off um, after we sew. You see that it's not that difficult. <laughs> it's not that bad. I know we don't like, we like crocheting, not sewing, but it's not as difficult as it looks like. So you see that this is my last stitch. There is a small gap here. We sewed everything and this is the last one. So in this part, I simply insert the tapestry needle and you can leave with the with the tapestry needle and the thread at any point in your amigurumi. Okay, you just pull it like this and it's safe. What do I do now? You see the importance of leaving a long thread for sewing because we sewed everything and it was enough yarn to do that. If you have like a short thread, it would be very very difficult and honestly i should have left a bigger thread you'll see why yeah 
actually i should have left a bigger thread because now my yarn split has split and it's a bit difficult to continue okay i had to cut a little bit <laughs> to explain it to you and how do i usually fasten off this last part i do what i call the invisible knot to do this invisible knot we can grab any loop any loop from the stitches where the yarn is you see that we have this stitch here it's close to the yarn we have this stitch here it's close to the yarn this one so you have four four single crochets it's up to you which one you will choose okay so i will take this one this one you see it doesn't make a difference actually so you pass the tapestry needle like this you create a loop and you simply tie a knot by passing the tapestry needle in this loop again and you pull the thread when you pull the thread you see that you create a knot that's why we call it invisible knot and now what you have to do is pass the tapestry needle again in the same gap where the knot is you cannot like insert the tapestry needle here because there will be a distance between the knot and the gap you have to pass the tapestry needle exactly in the gap where the knot is and you can pass the tapestry needle to any part any point in your amigurumi pull the thread and let's observe what happens to the knot the knot is here and when you pull it the knot enters the amigurumi i pulled it hard so you could see but it you can do it like this so you don't have that um, you don't have that gap here and that's it now you cut this remaining thread and that's it for the first sewing technique so now we are going to sew the ears to the head of our amigurumi um, the ears are not stuffed so I'll leave the stuffing aside and actually we don't need the stitch markers anymore um, as always as I said before we will fasten off to um, to avoid having this this difference here between the, the first and the last stitch this is something we have to do we always have to do skip this, the, the following stitch oh I'm sorry this is the following stitch yeah so you skip the following stitch and insert the tapestry needle here sometimes I'm teaching you and I am looking at the camera and not my hands that's why I commit these mistakes I'm so sorry and we create the false stitch by inserting the tapestry needle here and now it's flawless and this is how the the ears of our amigurumi we don't want it flat like this we want these ears to make a curve okay so what we have to do is pin of course we will pin this part to the head because if we don't pin it, it will be way more difficult. Take as many pins as you want. This is where my yarn is. So just keep pinning everything. And you see that I created like a C curve okay letter C <laughs> we don't want it flat we want this curve in our amigurumi so we will we'll sew every stitch to every gap making this curve in this part and in this part it can take a while in the beginning I know that but patience is the key my biggest advice here if you want you can also position the other ear 
just to make sure that you like the position you see that I have one two three rounds from the magic ring like from the gap from the the hole here that we started the magic ring one two three you measure the same to the other side and you pin but um, I think it bothers me a little bit when I am sewing and I have another part of the amigurumi with lots of pins so I don't like to do that I prefer to pin the first one I check if this is a good uh, a good position in my amigurumi and when I know that it is the other one I leave aside and just sew the first one we will sew one ear and don't fasten off okay when we have two parts of the amigurumi to be sewed like ears um, I have everything here the arms or the feet one of the biggest tips is do not fasten off one arm and then you sew the other because maybe one arm is like I don't know here and the other is in the back and then you regret that you already fasten off and there is no way back so every time you have two parts you want to find some symmetry you want it to be like as symmetrical as possible so you sew the first one don't fasten off sew the other if they are in the right place okay you can fasten off otherwise it's easier for you to remove and try to sew it again okay so let's start sewing the ears everything is well pinned and you enter the tapestry needle like this my my pin is here you can see the technique that I use is very simple basically the same that we did with the muzzle you just have to be a little bit more careful when it comes to the curve that we are we are sewing because here it was a bit easier this was a straight line and also here you only have the curves in the sides of the muzzle but now you have the curve here and in the back I like this way of making the ears because if you're planning to give this this pig for example to a kid um, this way it will be very very safe always observe where is the closest gap to the stitch for to the following stitch that you have to pass the thread and pull the yard I know it demands patience You see what I'm doing I'm always observing if I'm keeping this curve because if I do this it will be uh, a straight line and I don't want it I want the curve because it's way prettier for the amigurumi I do this I observe where is the closest gap here you 
you see when I pass the, the yarn here and I pull the thread in the following stitch, the ear comes here to the front and I lose the curve. So what I'm always doing is I'm putting it back to observe where is the next gap that I have to enter with the tapestry needle. So that way I keep the curve in the ears. Okay, I will finish this side and then, then I will come back to do the back part of the ears with you. So I finished sewing the inner part of the ears and now we will sew the second part here, the back part. For me, this part is easier because we can easily enter the, the tapestry needle here. We can see better all the stitches and all the gaps that we have to sew. This part is a bit more complicated um, and it can be a little bit more difficult because we need to make sure that we are inserting the crochet hook in the correct gap to create the curve, this, this hole here in the ears, okay? But it, it just seems a bit more complicated, it's not, believe me. <laughs> With a little practice, you get there. You see? It's not that difficult, this part. So, you remove the pins as you crochet, not crochet, I'm sorry, as you sew. But remember that we won't fasten off. Actually, in this part, remember that we won't stuff it. It's still open here, but if you want to leave it like this, and start sewing the other ear, it's also a possibility. And I guess I will do that with you, so you can follow my explanation. Because now, if we remove the pins, it won't move, it will be here. It's just opened, this part, but it won't make a difference, right? And if needs be, if we need to remove it, it's, it's easy, because we can see the yarn here, you just have to pull um, this yarn one by one. We can pin this other and start sewing it. So let's do it together. One, two, three, one, two, three. And I like to count everything and count all the stitches like the e the eyes are here so one two three four one two three four let me put it here it's very difficult sometimes to find symmetry so I like to use these references like the eyes so I have four here I have four here hmm, what else can I count they seem to be in the same place. For some reason, this one looks a little bit more here and this one to the back, so I will move it a little bit more. But you see the... Oh, now it's good. Yeah, now it's good. So you see the importance of pinning everything? Imagine if I simply started sewing without placing the, the ears with pins. I will probably regret it. Yeah, it looks very, very good. Even this part is aligned. So you can start sewing these parts too. And when you get like almost to the end of it, then you can compare them both. And that's what I'll do. So I will do exactly what I did with you in this first part. I don't want this video to be that long, so I will start sewing using exactly the same technique that I did here, all the explanation that I already given, and when I get to almost the end of it, I will come back so we can compare, and then we can finish sewing and fasten them up. Okay? 
so I will sew it and I will come back when I'm almost done with it okay you see that I sold half of it I just sold the back part it's still open here but now when I look at the pig like this they are even so now I can continue sewing this part like the first ear I will finish sewing this now finish sewing this and fasten off okay so you learn the trick one of the tricks <laughs> when it comes to ears arms and legs you always sew half of it and the other half so then you can check if it's in the right place you see if they're in symmetrical and then you continue sewing and fasten off but always guys use pins you see that when we use pins the parts don't escape that easily and it's way easier for us to reach the correct place. I will continue doing it and then I will come back so we can sew the body to the head of the amigurumi. If you want to keep learning how to crochet this beautiful amigurumi pig, just click the next video.